Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. And welcome back as we continue our coverage here on theCUBE of Dell Technologies uh, 2018. Big show going on here in Las Vegas. We're in the Sands right now, 14,000 people strong in attendance. And this is day two of three of live coverage right here on theCUBE. Along with Keith Townsend, I am John Walls, and we're now joined by uh, Matt Leibowitz, who is the global lead of multi-cloud infrastructure at Dell EMC Consulting. Matt, thank you for joining us here on theCUBE. Happy to be here, long time listener, first time caller. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you're on the phone, Matt, go. <laughs> and uh, Vijay Kanchi, who is the global innovation lead of IT transformation at Dell EMC. First Great. time listener as well, Vijay? Yes, absolutely, and delighted to be here. Or thank long time you. listener, long first time, time yeah. caller. Yeah. Right, right, right. Get the term terminology. Matt, right. in New Jersey. <laughs> You're up, go. Let's talk New Jersey Devils. Let's do now, it. Let, let's talk first off about, about uh, the way your two units uh, intertwine. I mean, just so we set the table here a little bit and understand how the two of you and, and the people for whom, uh, with whom you work, how you interact. At yeah, so Dell. It maybe makes sense if you start VJ and then Yeah, all. so uh, we're part of uh, Dell EMC's consulting organization. And uh, within that consulting organization, Matt and I work together to focus on IT transformation programs, right? So we design and develop services for our consulting services organization to go deliver uh, IT transformation programs. Okay, so I mean, digital transformation, you know, uh, thrown around quite a bit you know, these yeah. days. When you look at it from uh, the, the macro picture, from an organizational standpoint, from their perspective now, um, you know, what does that mean, if you will? How do you get organizations to buy in? Because I'm sure the IT professionals with whom you work, they're in large part, they're there, I would guess. But they've got to bring along an entire organization with them, and that, that's, a, that's a tall task, Matt. Yeah, and there's no doubt that when it comes to cloud, and especially multi-cloud, like you said, the whole organization needs to come along for the ride. It's just not something that IT can do in a vacuum. And we've seen when they try to do it in a vacuum, they're often unsuccessful. So get those stakeholders involved outside of IT, executive level, bring them in, show them, share with them, you know, your KPIs for success. Show them what success looks like and then bring them along for the ride. And that's ultimately how you get success with cloud. So let's talk progression. What are the most successful projects, at least what is the data points you see out of the most successful projects when the C-suite says, you know what, we're going to do digital transformation, IT go execute. What are the critical points of information IT needs to collect so that it can come to a Dell EMC consulting to help execute on that strategy? Uh, well, it's a, it's a long list. I mean, <laughs> <coughs> how, long, how much time do we have? <laughs> I, you know, I, again, I think, Success criteria, what, what success looks like is, is really important because I think what you said is, is what often happens. You know, IT leaders or leaders of the organization say we need to transform. We need to change our business to adapt. Yeah, what is transformation? What, right. what does that even mean? Right, yeah. well you have, that's up to, uh, it's up to the business to define what the next stage looks like. Mm -hmm. Right, and so that could be anything from just being able to operate like a public cloud, provision quickly, uh, iterate quickly on new software, new, you know, new development tools, or it could be a, a major transformation of the whole business where they're entering a new market and they need to operate a little differently. So yeah, what? So, I mean, just to add to what Matt just said, you know, from a digital transformation perspective, it's all about getting velocity of application functionality out to customers, users, and end stakeholders, right? Um, when a C-suite leadership comes and says, we need to go transform our business, then they really look to IT as a significant player to enable that, right? And one of the biggest issues that you have in driving capability to market fast is being able to go build infrastructure or environment pretty quickly, right? And most IT organizations are, you know, dealing with technical debt that's been around for at least 25, 30 years. Uh, it starts with, you know, legacy critical systems that are potentially mainframe, client server, all the way through, you know, digital platforms that they've built out. Um, and so in order to be able to go make that work 
I think the one key important thing that we always talk about is you need to go get automation of your code delivery process, and then you need to go in and build infrastructure and environment so that you don't have as much queue time versus runtime, right? Because ITs have historically been in the request response business. I'm sure in your world as well, if you need a you know, fix to your computer, first thing you have to do, call up or right. send a request. That goes to somewhere, somebody is sitting behind the queue and they're processing it. And so the whole objective to make digital transformation is to be able to reduce and eliminate the queue time eventually and enable the runtime. So that's kind of the first thing from an operational perspective. And then from an outcomes perspective, it's about sitting down and bringing a cross-functional team of folks from marketing, business units, IT, security and compliance, and bringing them together to figure out what sort of outcomes they're looking to achieve, what does that journey look like, timing-wise, from an outcomes perspective, and then work to bring everybody together to establish a shared <laughs> purpose and a shared objective. So those are some of the key things that we find that almost every single time you engage with customers, you've got to have those conversations first in order to be able to go dig under the covers to figure out where the issues are and then start to unclog the jams where they exist in the plumbing <laughs> of IT. So, <laughs> this is part of that people transformation Michael talked about on stage today, again was brought, I mean, yesterday, and then was brought up again on stage today. Having that conversation for someone who's usually heads down maintaining AIX, maintaining new infrastructure for a digital, we're not equipped to normally have that conversation. Where are you seeing the gaps in skill and, and how do organizations close that gap so they can even come to you guys and say, you know what, we want, we, we can see clearly we need to automate our CI, CD process, help us through that, which is where you guys yep. excel. So go ahead, Matt. Well, I, you know, I think that, <laughs> It's a challenge because sometimes they don't even know what they don't know. Yeah, don't know what we don't know. <laughs> right. right, and so they'll they'll come to us and like they'll give us a request like that. We need to modernize our infrastructure. We need to automate and uh, you know deliver IT as a service. But they don't really know what that means, and so you know they're going to need to <coughs> excuse me. They're going to need to reskill some of their folks, and I think that's operationally very scary for uh, individuals who work in IT. But the reality is, and you know we see this over and over again. If you want to attract the best and the brightest in IT, you need to be working with the latest technology. And so, folks shouldn't be afraid of that change. They should embrace it because ultimately it's going to drive their career forward. And when they're working on the latest and the greatest, they're going to deliver value for the business instead of just keeping the lights on. And that's kind of the challenge too, isn't it? Is that I just figured this out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we're yeah. that that's cycle right. exponentially. I mean, the yeah. capabilities increase, your, your, your skill set is lagging. And now you've got to play catch up as an IT professional. I just learned how to spell Kubernetes yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> if you could teach me, that'd be great. <laughs> Capital K. <laughs> I mean, it's true though. I've been you know, working with virtualization for a long time, and it's funny to see the progression back in you know, 2001, 2002, where everyone just thought, this thing is crazy, nobody's going to do this. You know, to, we get to the point where we're having conversations around uh, virtualization first policies. And now we're talking about cloud first policies. So technology in the pace of change waits for nobody. And so uh, we have to help organizations be ready yeah, to what, adopt that change. What is it right now? I mean, what's the big leap you think that on that side, on the client side, that their teams have to make? So what? there's probably three areas that I see that they have to make some changes, right? So from a business perspective and IT, they need to trust IT and integrate their uh, needs and requirements into a process where business really oftentimes don't know what specifically they want from IT. They know and they have some vision of what they want to achieve. And so they need to go sit with, in a collaborative way, with the IT teams and oftentimes the security teams, the CISO teams, to build together this, I'll we'll call it cross-functional team that can really come together to tease out and brainstorm their way through to figure out what are the outcomes that they're trying to achieve, what is the strategy, and what do they need to look like in three years from now, right? And then work their way back. So that's one piece, is 
cultural shift in how IT engages with business. The second part is uh, around how do organizations get better? You know, you've, we've been hearing about the DevOps changes that drive, but DevOps is as much a tools and technologies conversations as it is a cultural shift to get the people that were, you know, uh, authors and critics, um, you know, coders and operations folks, you know, problem creators versus problem managers and maintainers. So those roles have been very cantankerous for the last 20 years because the operations folks are responsible and driving for stability, reliability, and availability, whereas coders are focused on driving new innovation. So fundamentally different objectives. So in order to make that shift, you need to go in and create another environment and culture of shared pain and shared objectives and shared rewards. So that's another key chain. And then from a skills perspective, what we're finding is that, uh, you know, when we get to the technology and infrastructure part, the folks who used to be storage administrators, network administrators, you know, compute administrators, et cetera, they now have to go broader, not as much deep in silos, and they need to look at converged, for example, infrastructure. They need to be thinking about stitching that together with security and DevOps and cloud SecOps, right? And so those are the key differences. Um, from an administrative pers perspective, you need to go in and take your existing skills and expand to be more broader um, versus siloed, right? So that's, um, and then the, there are some new skills that are needed to enable all this, right? And so I kind of look at the third part being the new skills are you need folks that never did this type of stuff before to go start doing cloud administrative, um, multi-cloud management and operations. Um, you need to be able to go do uh, what Google calls site reliability engineering and what Cloud Foundry calls platform operations and platform engineering. So, so those even are, before we get there, yeah, uh, yeah. from a breadth of capability for the Dell organization, consulting organization, has the requirements and demand on the organization has changed. It was from, it went from, you know what, helping install and uh, design, install, and operationalize a VMAX and VMware infrastructure to help me enable a DevOps practice, which is sure. two completely different sets of skill. From Excellent. a practical perspective, two years ago, you look at Comcast's uh, uh, DevOps team, that whole team is now at Walmart. Yep. How do you guys create the, just, and nurture the skill set needed to even deliver the capability from a services side? Well, I mean, that's a great question because we have to transform too. Right. Because we have to transform and meet the needs of our customers. So, you know, that's primarily responsibility of the consulting organization to stay on top of technology and move into those new areas of skill. And so, you know, if you look back just a couple years ago and you saw the kind of work that our consulting organization was doing, you know, a lot of things like, you know, helping customers migrate exchange servers and SQL servers, we don't do a lot of that anymore. We're helping them design and uh, create a transformation roadmap for multi-cloud. So it's, you know, really important for us to keep our folks as skilled and looking six, 12, 18 months in advance so that we don't have the problem you just described where our entire team moves from you know, one organization to another, our customers need something from us and we can't deliver it. So that's, that's a high importance for us. And from sure. a consulting organization perspective, as Matt said, we are having to reinvent ourselves probably at least two or three times in the last five years, right? Uh, that's because of the pace of change in the marketplace. Um, and so, you know, we have a shared responsibility to help drive some of our thinking around this transformation internally ourselves. Yeah. One is to be able to go figure out what are the types of services we need to go build to deliver transformational programs to our customers. So define the what, and then I work, and that's primarily my responsibility, and then I work very closely with Matt to figure out what are the skills we have in our organization today what are the net new skills that we need to go build? And then, what are the skills that we have today that we can extend to support these new things that we see coming, right? Such as taking infrastructure administration and management to providing and transforming that into providing it in, in the context of 
microservices, for example, right? Or infrastructure as code, storage as code, security as code, et cetera, right? So those are some of the things that we try to make. And then from a business perspective, we're trying to build out skills to look at what types of um, organizational changes do we need to make? What are the types of uh, uh, transformational programs and transformational metrics that you need to track? So if you have a 18 month transformation program or a nine month transformation program, that you're not going to go wait for 18 months to see if you've achieved your outcomes. We've identified KPIs for the transformation program where you look every 90 days to say, are you achieving that? So we have two teams. We have a team of what we call discipline leads, folks like Matt, who are championing and evangelizing our organization to say, here are the things that you guys need to change to and find training enablement to go drive that globally around the world as part of our consulting organization. And then, you know, there are going to be skills that we don't have that we go and acquire in the marketplace. But to your point, it's not like they're sitting around waiting to be plucked <laughs> off the, the marketplace. So, it's, you know, part of it is, you know, finding the right people who have a little bit of the aptitude that can make the pivot and then learn fast, right? So, so it's a little bit of everything, and it's as much an art as it is to science. To yeah, it's, it's funny too, again, if you look back at our organization just a few years ago, we didn't have a focus on public cloud, and now we've got folks that are trained and certified and some of the best in the world at public cloud technologies, because we have to change and we have to transform just like our customers. Yeah, we talk about being nimble and agility, oh, yeah. and the other, you do too, right? Yeah. You have to live, walk that walk as well. I'm less yeah. nimble the older and older I get, but. <laughs> right. Aren't we all, man? Aren't we all? Organizationally, you're absolutely right. Well listen, gentlemen, thanks for being here. We appreciate the time. No longer first time uh, callers. That's right. All all right. right. Back soon. You're now CUBE veterans. <laughs> Thank Thanks you for guys. being with us. Thanks, we, we Thanks for the time. Thank Back you. with more here from Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE coverage of Dell Technologies World 2018.